Hi, George here. And today I'm answering a question from Rod about how to add a stripe onto a car. I just happen to have a picture of something like that. This is my old Z car I used to have. It's a 300 ZX Turbo. Great car, but it died after about 20 years. But it does have a stripe on it. So we'll be doing the same kind of idea here in this picture. Let's just get rid of this. And I'll be doing that over here on this car right here, putting a nice yellow stripe on this black car. Pretty straightforward process, but it is important to be careful of a few things to get this so it looks realistic. And before we get into this project, a couple of things I wanted to mention first, of course, I'm sure you've already heard this, is that I'm going to be moving all of my new Photoshop Elements videos over to my HTG Photo channel starting in September. That's going to be the new home for the Photoshop Elements. All of the videos at that point, all the new videos, will be over there on that channel, and it's going to be dedicated just to Photoshop Elements Photoshop, Affinity Photo, and other photo-related content. And then my HTG George channel is going to be switching over to just gaming and Minecraft content. So I'm separating out those two channels so that gaming is on one channel and my photo stuff is on a separate channel. I think that's going to be working out much better that way. Also, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Consider hitting that thanks button and sending me a thanks. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, then take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It really is the best way to learn how to use this program, much better than just watching these YouTube videos. Okay, let's go ahead and get to work on this thing here. And the first thing we'll do is to download the original picture. Let me just get this out here. I'll close that out. I won't bother to save anything there. I got this picture over on Pixabay. Let's switch over there and download the image. And here we go at Pixabay. This is my favorite site for getting public domain and royalty-free images to use. This is where I get most of my images for use on my YouTube videos here. And the one that we want is right here. And I'll put this link in the description so you can go ahead and just click on the link and get right to this picture. And then simply download right over here. Now I have an account here with Pixabay. It's a free account and it allows you to download very quickly and easily. I'm not logged in right now, so this is how the login goes if you don't have an account here. But again, go ahead, get an account. It's free. We want this one right here, the 1920 by 1094. This is basically the same size as a 4x6 standard Photoshop Elements file. Click on Download. And I'll be saving it right here into my Projects folder, where I normally save my temporary files. Just choose Save. Now, sometimes when you get to that point, you'll get a little pop-up window here with some kind of a confirmation thing. Normally, it's one of those things where you have to match pictures or something. No big deal. It just slows it down just a little bit. But it's a great idea to go ahead and get an account here. Like I said, account's free. And if you use the site a lot, it just makes it much easier for your downloading. Okay, we've got our picture. We can get this out of the way. Let's now open our picture up here inside of Photoshop Elements. That's File and Open. And there it is right there. Choose Open. And there's the image. Okay, now whenever I work on an image, I always try to make a backup copy at this point. Right here where it says Background, right-click on that. Choose Duplicate Layer. Choose OK. And that gives you a safety copy. Just in case we mess this up, we can always go back to our background and start over again. It just makes it real easy that way to kind of mix a protection. Also, as soon as you have layers in here, this is going to be saved as a Photoshop Elements file and not saved back on the original. So again, it protects your original that way. So also, I'll be doing a stripe on this thing. So I can put that stripe on a new layer. Let's do that. Here's our new layer. And that makes everything nice and safe. Now, it's a good idea to visualize what it is you want to do before you actually do your drawing on this. We have to draw in the shape of our stripe. So let's analyze things. You can see here, here's a nice line, nice crease on that hood. We can use that as a reference. And notice that it curves down towards the front here and more of a curve right in there. Keep that in mind. A bit of a curve in here. Also, notice that it's further in towards the car here at the front and further out towards the edge at the back. So this is at an angle, which means for our stripe to be straight, it's going to be going like this and actually going further in up here and not clear out over there. It's not going to be following this curve. It's going to be coming in straight here. Now, an easy way to visualize this is to grab a shape tool. Here's the line tool. And I'm going to set this thing at 30 pixels, pretty good size. Let's change our color here to a yellow. This is the CMYK yellow, which looks better if you're working on a photograph like this. And then I'll come right down here, just inside a little bit, click and drag, and you can see there's that shape right there. There's that, that stripe shape. So there's the beginning of my shape, kind of like this. I'll put that one here. I'll do another one in here. It'll go back somewhat like that, an angle like that. 
I'm judging off the center of the car on this one. So that's kind of where that's gonna be here. We we'll then go up the window. Of course, not actually on the window, but it would move up like that. And then it would go across the top of the car. So pre-visualizing it like this can help you to draw in your image properly. Now this is not wide enough. I want about twice that wide. So we also now have a reference in here for about how wide we want to have this stripe. Okay, I'm just going to delete all of those layers. Now that we've seen that, we have an idea of how I want to do this. Trash this, and of course that color looks good. Let's now go up here to the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll start right about down here. And I'm going to zoom in a bit on this. And let's do the hood part of this first. And that's zoomed in too much. I'll back it up just a little bit. Right about here. There's a the polygonal lasso tool. So I'll start right down here someplace. Now with this tool, you click and then you drag to find your next spot and click again to set that in place. That gives you straight lines. So here's our next spot right here. And it begins to curve in here. And we're going to want to be curving it from here and curving it around, but not too much. Now to make a curve with this tool, click and then pull it a little ways, click again and a little more. We can adjust that if we need to later on. So for this part, you have to really just visualize exactly where the stripe should be going. Since we're doing this on a new layer, we can change it. If we don't like how it looks, we can go back in and fix things. But I'll try to get it as close as I can here. I'm just visualizing each time I'm clicking here, try making this thing as smooth as I can. And right back up to here. So that's for the hood part. Hold the space bar down, we can then move this around. It's gonna be going up the window. It'll be going to about, about here, I think, right there, click on that point. And this has a lot more of a curve to it, so I have to put in more dots closer together. And I'm following that curve over the window just visually. And it's gonna be curving right around here, right up past that sunroof that I just spotted in here. Across the edge of that sunroof, that makes sense. And take it clear back to the back and then go across the back. Now let's keep in mind, because of perspective, it's gonna be skinnier at the back and wider at the front. So we need to do that as well. And I'll just Pull it along here, and as I get into this part here, I'll begin making it wider right here, like that. Straight down, but again, a little wider. As I come down, it's getting closer to us, a little bit wider here. Space bar again, let's move our image. I'll just be following along like this, and keep on making just a little bit wider as we go. And we'll begin to start our curve right around in here. Very subtle curve. And just bring that around. And the trick here is just visualizing in your mind exactly where it should be. And right about here, and then right down towards the front right here. Straight across, back to the beginning, and there's our basic stripe area. Let's now set this at a new layer. There's a new layer up here. We have the paint bucket, click inside of that, and that fills that with that yellow color. Okay, I'll do Control D to deselect, Control Zero, and that looks good. Notice my settings down here for my paint bucket, opacity at 100%, tolerance 32. It really doesn't matter that much on this, but that looks pretty good. And then the polygonal lasso tool had feathering set at just one pixel on the feathering, gave it just a little bit of a soft edge. Okay, now I need to get rid of this stuff that we don't need. The basic stripe looks good. Just two spots, I'll zoom in here to the front. We wanna get rid of that gap where the hood is. And we'll do this fast and easy. I'll just take my polygonal lasso tool again. Let's just come straight across like that. And then down here and then straight across back to the beginning. And I'll just use the eraser tool and just erase that out. There we go, Control D to deselect. Do the same thing for the windscreen. Let's back out just a little bit here. There we go. Polygonal lasso tool again. There's the top of the hood straight across and up here. And then right where that dark line is, just above that dark line, straight across to here and back to the beginning again. Eraser tool, let's just erase that out of there. There we go. Could also use the delete key that sometimes works out pretty well. I tend to go you know, one or the other, it really doesn't matter. And then Control D to deselect. And there's our basic stripe. Control zero to fit on screen, but it doesn't really look natural yet. It's close, but it's not quite natural. 
So for that, let's adjust our blending mode up here. So here's a stripe layer. I'll just rename this stripe like that. And then here's our blending modes. Now if you use the blending modes, open it up like that, close it down again. If you have a wheel on your mouse, you can use the wheel to just scroll through and look at the different blend mode settings like that. But I find that down here, lighter color, linear dodge sometimes works, but that's not yellow enough. Lighter color doesn't look too bad. Or some of the ones down here, soft light and hard light occasionally work out well. Soft light is too soft. Hard light is pretty good. I'm getting a little bit of a color shift in there. And that's what I'm looking for, just a little bit of a color shift on that. And there we go. I'll use hard light for this one. And there it is, adding a stripe onto a car. Now, I could have made it a bit more of a curve up here, possibly, you know, finesse it a little bit, maybe make it wider. But once you did it one time, you can then go back in and adjust and compensate for any little design changes that you may have. It's another reason why I like having this on its own layer. I can always take that out and start over again or just add in more to that stripe right on this same stripe layer. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Consider sending me a thanks. That really helps out my channel a lot, keeps this channel going and also helps out my new channel. Make sure you go over and subscribe to the new HTG photo channel. I'll put the link for that in the description. Starting in September, all of these videos are gonna be over there. All the new ones anyway, will be over there on that HTG photo channel. All the old stuff is still gonna be here. There's no good way to move old videos from one channel to another on YouTube. So the old stuff is still gonna be staying here. But everything that's new will be over there on the HTG photo channel. And I'll be going back in and probably redoing some of those videos as well, kind of freshening things up. Some of the more favorite videos, more popular videos, I'll make new versions of those as well as we go forward. And a lot of new fun stuff coming up real soon here, starting in September. And don't forget to take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It is definitely the best way to learn how to use this great program. And I'll put a link for that in the description. And I'll see you next time.